unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 11 verses 24. The Bible says, The ease that scattereth and yet increaseth, and the ease that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. Give me the Amplified of that. The Amplified Bible says, There are those who generously scatter abroad and yet increase more. Yet, yet he says, There are also those who withhold, the Bible says, more than is fitting or what is justly due, but it results only in want. Hello? Hello? As the next verse says, The liberal soul or liberal person shall be enriched and he who waters himself shall be watered. And the next verse says, He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. Now let's go back to what I was trying to talk about here. You know what scattering is. Scattering is giving. It's giving. It's just being a giver. Now, the Bible has principles on how to give. You understand? The Bible has what? Principles on how to give. And I'm going to touch some of them. Now, we're not talking about principles of giving. No, I'm talking of principles of how to give. I'm going to show you why some of you don't have a what? A harvest in your lives. Some of you don't give or some of you give the wrong way. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, you all know the proverb book, uh, 1322. Everybody reads it. Huh? Everybody reads it. He says, a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. That's one of the most fundamental truths for the New Testament. The Bible says that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. You know what that means? It means that all the money you see in the world for men who don't know God is yours. Can you believe it? That everything they are doing, they are doing for you. That's one of the most fundamental truths of understanding how the, the economy of the kingdom of God works. He has said that the wealth, the wealth of the sinner, the Bible says in the Amplified Version, it says it finds its way eventually into the hands of Apostle Grace through whom it was laid up for. Put your name. That is why you don't admire a sinner with money. Hello? Because you know it is your money. Oh, but the people of the world are rich. Why are we poor? They are rich on your money. Remember the evil disease in Ecclesiastes chapter 6 and verses 1. He says, for I've seen an evil disease on the earth. And it is common. Among men. For he says that man, a man to whom the Lord has given what? Riches, wealth, and honor. So that he wanteth nothing for his soul. The Bible says for all that he desireth. Yet he receiveth not the power to eat thereof. And he says and a stranger comes and eats thereof. And God calls it vanity. An evil disease. And he said it's common. Somebody say far from me. See everything they have is yours. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Everything a sinner has, a wicked man has, it's yours. The wealth of wicked men is ours. Are you hearing me? We just need to know how to talk to it. Money, listen, money does not, to a believer, does not understand the language of commanding a believer. Money understands the language of answering a believer. The Bible says money answereth to all things. Do you hear what I just said? 
Man is supposed to be answering to you. It's not supposed to be questioning you. It's not supposed to be commanding you. Some of you, money commands you. The way you look. Eh? Everything you do shows that you're commanded and led by money. How do we know? Oh my God. When you didn't have physically, your walk was... You understand? Even the way you used to walk, you used to show that. Oh my God, you got money. Now you're bending the shoe. That's money commanding you. When riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Don't set your heart on them. Don't be too beautiful and rich. Not to serve and do what you're supposed to be doing. Boo, because you have money. That's money commanding you. Money is not supposed to command you. Money is supposed to answer you. Now, if you know that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just, there are principles of transferring this money from them to us. Isn't it? Let me give you one of them. In Proverbs 19, 17, Proverbs chapter 19, 17, you all know this scripture again. It says, he that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he has given, will he pay him again? When you, for example, consider the poor. Are you hearing me? When you, for example, consider the poor. The Bible says the Lord repays you. You are lending God money. Oh, and man, he gives interest. That God gives interest. But I've also seen people who lend rebellious men and call them poor or who give rebellious people and they call them poor tell your neighbor have wisdom in your giving no this believer doesn't fast fruit they don't give their fast fruit this believer struggles they don't tithe and then they get broke and then they say i'm poor then you give them money if they are a believer you're funding rebellion and that is the ground you should not expect anything from Oh, at least now you know it. You did it in ignorance. And the Lord winked. Now, he calls you to change your mind. Now, it's like, let me also talk about this. We have young men who don't want to work. Their fellow friends wake up at 6 a.m. They go to look for jobs. They go to hard work. And the dude sits in the house like this. Watching somebody's TV. You understand? And then the dude in the evening says, man, <laughs> if you have a 20K, slap somebody and tell them the one they're talking about didn't come. No, I'm not talking about someone who has tried and failed to get a job. I'm talking about people who don't want to work. I know people who don't like working. They carry nothing in the diligence of the spirit. They cannot stand before kings. They stand before mean men. Men, when you're not diligent in your spirit, only mean men surround you. That's what the Bible says. See, is there a man diligent in his work? For that man shall stand before kings and not stand before mean men. People, get jobs and work. Even me, I do things on the side besides the gospel. Yes, my pastors work even though they have money. But then you go in the bed and then you sleep the whole day and then in the evening you send a text message to, to an unstable soul and they have to, to fund rebellion. The Bible says he that does not work, he shall not what? Can you continue funding them. That's why I mean when I get those people and they say, oh, I suppose I need some money. I tell them, you know what? Tomorrow at 6 a.m. come uh, and slash at the office. They never come. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to put this person to a practical understanding that God wants to, he wants to work with your hands. He shall bless the works of your hand. What are your hands doing? They are flipping through channels. Don't sit and wait at home. No. Work out in faith and start, present yourself worthy to be hired. Somebody shout hallelujah. Draw your price in the spirit and go do something with yourself. Don't wait for a white collar jobs. There is a lot of land in the villages. Young people, go and dig. But there are 
are selling two acres of land at 2.5 million to buy border borders, but judge, motorcycles. Listen, never, listen, the scriptures are clear, and, and let me tell you a principle. The scriptures are clear. If you ever get to a place where you want, the scriptures are clear, turn to the ground. Turn to the ground. You'll always find an answer. Turn to the ground, you'll always find an answer. I told you one time, some of you months ago, nothing you see did come from the ground. Nothing. Whether it's this aluminium, it came from the ground. Whether it's, it's these plastics, they come from what? Rubber, right? Trees. Those, they, they get their life from the ground. Everything has its bearing from this ground you're stepping in. And in the ground, it is free. When it comes out, it has value. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you look for a job for two, three years and fail to get any, come on, go to the village and rent an acre and dig. Because this is the one thing God gave you. He said you shall eat of the good of the land. When you're stuck, turn to the ground. Don't send a text message to your uncle in America. Turn to the ground. Somebody shout hallelujah. You don't need to study agriculture. Our land is rich enough. You just throw a, a seed anywhere here and it will grow. How can we be poor with this kind of weather? How can we be broke when we don't have snow and winter? Come on, somebody. How weather is so beautiful. Ugandans. Eh? Uh, 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 uh. Government. No, 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 no. The, the government has nothing to do with you. Some of you don't. You're lazy. The Bible says a little sleep. A little slumber. And what does poverty do? It pounces on you. Mama, some people are quiet. Eh? What do I mean to say? Even when you don't have a job, avoid coming out of bed late. Wake up and do something. Say something. God will amaze you. So even though God says remember the poor, you must know who the poor are. Some people are not poor financially. Some people are poor in knowledge. When a man is poor in knowledge, give him knowledge. Don't give him money. To preach the gospel to the poor. He, he has anointed me. Jesus said, he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Those ones that lack knowledge, they need knowledge. Some people, they don't need... They, listen, your, your handouts will never help. They only make them more, un, more comfortable in their ignorance then you start funding rebellion but there are people who are really poor and some yes it's knowledge but they don't have a relationship with god and we have to be patient with them as they get in there okay some even know but they don't know much about god so we are patient with them as we give them but there's a point if you are the giver give knowledge also you understand ah me i tell them of oh, look i'm giving you money but money eh? learn to also be a tithe ah and I saw it there. Praise God. I quote the scripture. Do you understand what I'm saying? No. They don't dictate their terms when they need from you. No. You dictate your terms. Oh, I need to borrow money from you. Find me in Fanero on Thursday. <laughs> Learn them after the word. Tell them, did you hear the word? Okay, now you have money. Praise God. He says, he who he pities the poor lends to the Lord and that which he has given, the Lord will what? We'll give him again. Now, listen, that is a very fundamental truth for the Christian faith. Remember when Paul was giving his last words to Timothy? Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. You remember that scripture? Where unto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many. You remember when he's telling him his last words as a spiritual father? to the son, he goes in the 17th verse and he says, charge them that are rich in this world, he says, that they be not high-minded, not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, and he says, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready, now that's a rich man, ready to distribute and willing to communicate. When a man is rich, they are ready and willing to give. That's how you know the spirit of wealth on you. When, no matter how much you give, but if you have an unwillingness and, and if you're not ready, you understand? If when, you, 
when you're always not ready to do instruction by God, when you're not always willing and you're somebody they need to push, you're poor. It doesn't matter how much money you have. He says, charge them that are rich in this world to be rich in good works. Do you know you're rich? Yes. Always be ready and willing to give. Always be ready and willing. Those are the two things. Be ready and willing. You don't need to have a million. No, no, no. At one time, I told you this one day. One time I reached in a church and I was supposed to give and I knew I was not supposed to come in the presence of God empty-handed. I reached out for my shirt and I looked around and made sure nobody saw me and I pulled my button off. Because that's all I had. And I put it in that basket. Why? Because I refuse the mentality that I'm poor. I refuse the hesitation in my spirit. And the unwillingness in my spirit. Some of you don't receive because you're pushed to give. But he told Timothy, the poor, always be ready to communicate. In Galatians, when he's talking to the church, 2 verses 9, he says, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars of the faith, when they saw the grace that was given unto me and Barnabas for the uncircumcised that he was to them, to the circumcised, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. He says that we should go and preach the, to, to the heathen and they and to the uncircumcised. And the next verse says, when they were releasing us, Paul says that we should remember the poor, the same which I also forward you to do. Go preach, heal the sick, cast out devils. Remember the poor. Remember the poor. Remember the poor. Every week we are in prisons. You know why? Because they are poor. Every week, Fanero Ministries is in prisons. Every week. Do you understand what I'm saying? You think we can be held to luck? You think we can plead with men to give when our hand is liberal? Hello? We remember them that way. We are communicating. But some of you pastors, eh, you're not givers. You don't give. You, men of God, you understand? Eh? What are you left to do? Manipulate? Because there is no other way. Listen, in our ministry, and I'm not boasting, I'm telling you the truth. First fruit is an audit issue. We give it upward to the ministry submit to. Tithe is an audit issue. We give it upward to the ministry submit to. How can I worry that Fanero can lock? I cannot worry that Fanero can lock because I know the principles of mastery. I cannot bore you by talking about one whole hour before you to give. Every Thursday, now you people, if you don't give, mice will eat you. There's somebody here, God is telling you to do this. Listen, if you are told you, do it. We have a readiness and willingness. Somebody shout hallelujah. Why? Because we know who we are in God. Remember the poor, he said. Remember, he said, he that giveth to the poor, lendeth to the Lord. Now, let me show you a mystery. You're going to love this. Proverbs 28, verses 8. The Bible says, he that by usury and unjust gain increases his substance. That's the wicked man. The one who sins in the increase of substance. The Bible says, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. And he said that if a man is caught up in a usury, an unjust gain, and he increases his substance. The Bible says, that man gathers it for him that will pity the poor. When your heart is set to help poor men, guys who are playing in money are making money for you. Come on, somebody. Now, if you don't remember the poor, and then you claim the scripture, the wealth of the wicked, Jesus is stored up for the just. Are you hearing me? The other pitfall I see with Christians is they put themselves among the poor. You know, many of you don't even know where you are. It's like I've heard people saying, oh, God, he, he raises you from the dust and ashes and he makes you sit with princes. That is an Old Testament mentality. He said you are a royal priesthood. You're the one people come and sit with. You're, you're not the one who... Because you, your, your salary has elevated and, and then you're eating next to a guy who is blessed in the world. It doesn't mean that you've, stand, you've stood before a prince. 
No, you have a royalty. He said you're a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. You are children of the Most High. He's the King of Kings. Who are the kings? Priests and kings to the Most High God. The Bible says you've become in the book of Revelation. You reign. Those that reign are kings. You're kings, you're princes, you're queens of the Most High. So when the Bible speaks of men who, who, of whom he raises from dust, and then they sit eat with princes eh? or, or kings, eh? Th that scripture is for unbelievers who get money and eat with you. Who has? <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. In other words, you should never think you're poor. Even when they tell you to remember the poor, don't go to somebody and tell him, brother, they said remember the poor. That's the wrong mentality. Poverty does not begin when a man has. Neither does wealth define a man because he has. No. There are people who live all their lives poor and die rich. Those are called misers. And there are people who live all their lives rich and die poor. And there are people who live all their lives rich and die rich. That's me. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And I'm going to come to that when I go into the second one. The second part. In Corinthians, he says something. He says in nine verses, chapter 9 verse 7. He says, let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purposed in his heart. The Bible says, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Let me tell you. We, that's why you'll never hear me say, people, we need you to give. No. We are grateful for your response in the opportunity God has given you to give. Because giving is an opportunity. You're more blessed to give than to receive. Are you hearing me? We cannot continue always telling people, you, you know, we must see. And then before you know that, people are, are grudging. See, when you feel grudge in your heart, don't give. That's why I don't ask for money. Because I don't want a man to grudge in his heart and say, oh, you know why I'm giving? Eh? Apostle stuck on me. And you know how some men of God are? Eh? He sticks you in here and even looks at you. He looks at you like this. So, um, get your money, then he looks at it. Eh? <laughs> get your money. Then, then. I know somebody who went for a fundraising thing, and, and they were from, you know, the UK, right? And then, they, they, you know, there's these ministries that also invite certain men of God who know how to get money out of people. Uh, do I have uh, people? Eh? For them, they, they, they tell you, we are going to do fundraising. Bring all those people who have money. Yeah. Yongicho built ministry by the seed of the man who was sleeping in his church and gave a bowl. Yes. The Lord had told Yongicho build a ministry. He has one of the biggest churches in the world. That beloved man. The Lord told him build a church for me. He needed millions and millions of dollars. And then he makes a fundraising thing in the church and told people give. And then they all gave. And as they were giving, there was a man who was sleeping in the church. Very poor fellow. All he owned was a bowl. And he used to go with that bowl every time they were serving lunch. And he used to submit that bowl such that they give him food for it. And that day when everybody was making a fundraising, he brought his bowl and put it in. When he put it in and all collections were made, it was not anywhere to the fraction of what they needed. And then somebody brought him the bowl and told him, you know the man who sleeps in the church? He gave his bow. Yongi Cho gets that bow. He puts it on his table. And he was touched that some gave out of the abundance. But one man gave his best. This place where he ate food of. And then one missionary comes and asks him, hey, what's that bow on the table doing? He saw a very old bow and picked interest. And then Yongi Cho narrates the story to this missionary. And this is the missionary who flies in their nation. And fundraises almost all the money they need to build a building. But all of that came because of the seed of one man. They are seeds that deliver ministry. And they are not necessarily big. But they come from the biggest heart. Never forget that. It's not the amount. It's the heart. It's the heart. That is what.
is why you don't see us carrying rich people here. Oh, please, you, you, without your money, we could be nothing. No, 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 we don't do that. You know why? Because it's the heart. There is a person who has 10,000 and they've given it all. And there's one with 100 million and they've given 100,000. It is a spirit of poverty to think that the man who gave 100,000 is the rich one and the giver. That's why we don't reward big givers because we don't know how much you've given from your heart. Some man even told me, don't invest in students, they are very poor. Oh man, and, and I met poor students then. I remember my first five or six years of ministry. I did not save any money. Why? Because we were funding ministries of young children, students. And I called this man one time to preach. He refused to come. He said, students are poor. And I remember we used to get our pay. And we used to give these students. Why? Because you're at the bank, they give you a call, and they say, oh, come and minister in Gerenge. And then before you know that, 20 of them are on the bank standing outside. <laughs> and guess what? All those guys now have money. They're the ones funding Fanero. They are givers. They are not people who plead for to give. They are givers. Are you hearing me? You might be in a state where you're struggling financially. It, it is temporal. It is temporal. You're not going to struggle forever. That one, get it out of your head. Maybe you've been struggling for many years. Hey, knowledge. Now I'm giving you knowledge. So you walk out of that kind of struggle. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. You don't have to be forced and manipulated. No. If a man has to grudge to give me a million shillings, right? And without grudging, he can give me 50. Even if I have a need of a million, I would rather he gives me the 50 and not grudge. Why? Because this church is God's church. He says on this rock, I, I, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. His 50 shall be enough. God will lead another to give me more. But I will not now twist your arm. Some of you, you so I was telling you this person who went for a fundraising thing. And then there was this guy person from UK and they were seated there. And so they warned these pastors already in advance. That one has money. That one has money. Even the other one has money. Ah, okay. I know them. Cool. So two, three minutes. The pastor walks near the guy who is from the UK. Uh-huh. Man from UK. You gave us only 100,000. And the guy out of shame, he, hey, 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 praise God, may God surprise you, praise Then he continues, then before you know that, man from UK, I've seen even pastors who hold people back on service. I said, if we don't raise five million, nobody's walking out. Close that door, Rebecca. <laughs> Pastor, do you tithe? Do you give fast fruits? Do you remember the poor? Yes. My God shall supply all your needs. You don't reap where you sow. You reap what you sow. Who is understanding what I'm saying? Oh, sister, I was praying and the Lord showed me that you are giving me this amount of money. Oh, rockobobo. Oh, rockobobo. Oh, rockobobo. Me, when they call me, I tell them, hey, okay, I'm also going to wait. And God confirms the affirmation of your spirit to Jacob will be. Listen, if God wants to give you, he should talk to me because I'm the giver. Hello? I know somebody here. Somebody called him and told him, you know, the Lord, the Lord has told me that we are going to pay fees for my children. Hey, hey, hey. even had people, oh, sacrifice your Isaac. Your Isaac. There's a woman, I know she called me one day from Switzerland. Some pastor had called and told her, the Lord has told me, get into your house, remove everything and send it to me in Uganda. Your Isaac. So the woman asked me, Apostle Grace, what should I do? Me, I told her, if anybody comes to me and tells me this is my Isaac, I bless it and give it back to them. Why? Because Isaac was never killed. <laughs> This one's kill Isaac. My Isaac. 
you call it Isaac, you'll say, I'll just bless it and give it back to you. Because even God, he gave Isaac back to Abraham. Why should I eat what God doesn't eat? <laughs> Slap somebody and tell them, Checho. That's the truth. I cannot be poor. Tell your neighbor, I cannot be poor. Don't grudge. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. The Bible is very clear. Somebody shout hallelujah. A cheerful. The Amplified Bible says he is not able to do without. He, that means he will cling on you. That's powerful. In Deuteronomy chapter 15 verses 10. The message Bible. The message. I love the message in that. He says give freely and spontaneously. Don't have a stingy heart. The Bible says. The way you handle matters like this. The Bible says triggers God. It triggers. Do you want to trigger God? He has told you the right way to give. Don't give holding gradually. But my money. <laughs> Gundi have given you this thing. But it has pained me. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says give freely and spontaneous. You know what it means to be spontaneous? You can give any time and anything. There is nothing I can't give. I have been freed by God. There is nothing I can't give. There is nothing that is so expensive for me not to give. Because I'm that kind of person. The Bible says in that matter, the Lord, my God, my God, my God. Are you hearing me? You can never outgive God. In what you can get your year and give it to you in one month. That's the God I'm talking about. So when you're giving to God, whether it's 500, dance with it. Eh? You understand? Eh? It doesn't matter whether it's a dollar in your hand. Are you hearing me? Come to God when you're happy. When they talk about giving, slap someone and say, Whoa, we're giving. At least if you don't feel it, force yourself. That's the attitude of a rich man or a rich woman. As some of you will. Praise God. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But let's go to the last part. That's one is the one I wanted to touch most. There is that which holdeth back more than his meat. Let me explain why the Bible says more than his due or why is more than his meat. There are people who hold back because they are led by God not to do certain things. Me, there are, there are ministries I can't sow in. I promise. Because I would now be funding what? Rebellion and madness. Standard. 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 That's me. That's that it's meet for me to know where my ground should be. Period. Non negotiable. But also, some people have misunderstood the mind and concept in saving. Let me tell you what saving is. By the way, every Christian must learn to save. Balokoli. You serve for three things. One, you serve to give. Two, you serve for evil days. That in case something happens, that evil day does not need necessarily need to be with you. It could be with your neighbor. It could be with somebody you're concerned over. It does not necessarily need to be in your life. But it's beautiful to have money enough to help a brother who is struggling with rent. And I have it. Because I saved it. So I saved to give. I saved for evil days. Sometimes evil days are not necessarily the bad things that happen in your life. Sometimes it's the days that, that want to cause you into borrowing. Because when you borrow, you're a servant to the lender. Right? You also save to invest. And make wealth. And increase your money. Somebody puts a fixed deposit in a bank, you earn interest, that's saving. Somebody buys land and then it accumulates and makes more money than he invested. It was because they saved enough. It's beautiful to save. But, there are people who save more than is meat. I came for you. You earn 30 million shillings a month. You're sleeping in a house of 500,000. That is poverty. That means you've not yet come to the realization that God has created a means for you. How can
can you earn 30 million shillings and sleep in a house of 500,000? 500, 500. But because you are saving, you're going to become more poor. Many houses of 500,000, many, not all, many, they don't even have parking areas. That means you have not created opportunity to park a car. That means the car won't come because you have not prepared for it. Ah, slap somebody. You're earning 5 million shillings. You're going in Bufunda, those little small joints to eat cheap food. You get tapeworms and ringworms and every worm, every hookworm, you go to hospital, you buy my benders and all these things to deworm yourself because you ate a cheap meal. It's things that recycled food and then that recycled food messes up your belly and then you go to hospital with food poisoning. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Come on. If God has blessed you, enjoy. The Bible says, for it is the pleasure of the Lord that you enjoy the good things he has given you. Ah, if you have enough money to buy a suit, buy it. You didn't steal it, did you? Some people hold back more than is meat. It is not saving. No. It is punishing yourself. You live so poor, then you die rich. Then a kafane guy falls into your money. And he shows it Kampala. No, no. I need to rebuke some of you. Some of you are struggling financially. Because every amount of money you touch, you're reminded you're poor. You can't even tithe on it because you're poor. Huh? I will not tithe. Why? Because I have a need. You're poor. You don't have a need. You're just poor. Never put your need above the principle of God. If you do, you're poor. Oh, apostle, I have a debt. Don't you see that's where the devil wanted you? So you start paying loans all your life so you don't do your principles. And when you don't do your principles, you become poor. And then when we say, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. Even you scream and shout, yeah, you slap your neighbor. Then you go back and the landlord says, do, 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 do. You tell the house girl, praise God, hallelujah. Yes. If the Lord has blessed you with something, enjoy it. Some of you hold back more than is meat. Some of you save more than you're supposed to save. Let me tell you. Every, now, this is the last point I want you to get. And I learned this years ago. The Lord showed me this truth in 2013. And he told me, every now and then, do acts that increase your faith in the measure of the wealth you feel you have in God. Did you hear that? Do acts that increase your faith of the measure that you believe you have in God. You have a measure by God. You have something meet for you. So one time, I walked into this shop many years ago, and then I was probably earning, um, what, 1.8 million per month? Ha, over my stack says, where was it? So I'd saved some little money, little. So, <laughs> I walk into this shop in a foreign land. I just started moving, struggling. And then I enter this, this shop and I see this jacket. Do you know where you go in a shop and then you don't know the price and then you like something nice and then they tell you what's the price, then they tell you the price, then, you, then they tell you this thousand dollars. Then you even scare yourself. But you don't want to show the guy. <laughs> That you're scared. So it's sort of like that's called poverty. That is holding back more than his meat. So I went to this jacket and it costed about our uh, Ugandan shillings then was about 1.7. That is almost my monthly pay. So I look at this jacket like this and I say, but I want it. Ha, but that is a lot of money. It's not my class. Are you hearing me? That's poverty right there speaking. Uh, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, no. Listen, some of you think when we talk about money, we're, going to get, we're not going to heaven. No, we're going to heaven and we are spiritual. Now, listen. So I look at this jacket and now, spirit of poverty and the word of God, they start fighting each other. <laughs> buy, don't buy. Now, if you buy this money, you could have used it. For, you, you know, that's why you should be very careful about, do you remember when, when Mary poured oil on the feet of our master? Do you remember Judas? 
That money would have been used for the poor. <laughs> and the, but the Bible says, but he wanted to consume it on his own and rob it. He, he was a thief. Thieves talk like that. How can they spend that much money on, him, on this person? How can they buy for him this? Are they normal? You're a thief. <laughs> if they bought it for you, would you give it back? One wise man told me something, and I want you to learn it today. Never judge a man's fruit when you are not there when he was seeding. Never judge a man's fruit when you could not explain his seed. Never judge a man's fruit when you cannot explain his seed. Never. Because you might judge a man who has seeded. And judging a man's fruit who has seeded only positions you in more poverty. Because you're setting yourself against the course of truth. Food for thought. Anyway, so I look at this jacket. The Lord tells me, if you don't buy this jacket, you're never going to live beyond this mean. You don't need to believe me. That's your problem. So, I get my hard earned cash, monthly pay, and I bought this jacket. Now, the guy who was with me, the guy told me, huh, Apostle, you know. He told me, you know, there's something, and he said it looking in the air, called wisdom. <laughs> wow, wow, I knew what he was saying. I'm not dumb, I know what he's saying. Wow. He said, you have to apply wisdom in some of these things. No, I don't buy jackets every month of my month pay. But this one was an act of faith. <laughs> to tell God that I owe rubber, cost a rubber. Slap somebody and tell him. <laughs> Did you understand what I just said? This one was my act. The fellow doesn't know that I was dealing with poverty here. There was a spiritual warfare of should I, shouldn't I go, don't. You understand? I had one in my head, monthly pay. I could, do, I could do this and do that. And God told me, this one is for your faith. For the next measure. So I bought that jacket. Three months after, I was promoted. And my pay increased tremendously to close to double that. You know why? Because sometimes when you're a believer, I'm not saying all the time go buy it, but sometimes look at something that provokes your faith. Woo! And enter that shop and say, Rakobra, Sheteke, Riboranda, Robozi, Bakayala, and pay for it and keep quiet. Don't even tell people. There is that which scattereth, but it tendeth to increase. You bought a car, and now you're saying, no, the fuel. Re really? 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 You bought a car, and you're worried about its fuel? Which was bigger? Hello? Which was bigger? He that gave you the car, he will give you fuel. Why? Because the Bible says it's not the God who allows you to conceive and you don't bring forth. Why did he give you the car? Oh, they gave me a car, but I'm going to sell it. Why? Because you know I have many problems. Oh my goodness. You mean God could not give you a car and also meet your needs according to his riches? All your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus? Oh no. You know, apostle, this, listen, if God wanted to meet that particular need, he would not have brought you a car. He would have brought you money. He's God. But you must be like, was it Gideon? You build with one arm and fight with the other. Don't ever give excuses of, you know, I could have bought this, but now I'm in a project. Oh, you're poor. Listen, you can do all things. Tell your neighbor, I can do all things by Christ who strengthens me. You can do it. Oh no, me even when I'm in the middle of the biggest expenditure of my life and a deal comes, eh? oh my God, I talk like I'm not on something. Oh, so what do we do? How do we enter that? How much? Da, 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 da. I talk like there's nothing going. And when I start talking like that, I don't know how. The money starts to answer. 
Are you hearing me? What am I trying to tell you? Don't, don't be intimidated. Some of you even fear entering some shops. You say, oh, those ones are expensive. You pull yourself away. No. Practice your faith. Enter, enter, enter there. And smell it at least and say, I belong here. And go out. <laughs> Woo! Glory! One time I woke up and, and I saw a nice thing. You know me when I see something and I love it? Oh my God, I read about it. I research it. I get its books. I get its everything. I study it. I start talking to it. Your mind. Do you know? Do you know that your mind? That, that's me. You understand? That's me right there. And these things come. Because they have feelings too. They want to belong to someone who understands them. It's not witchcraft. It's faith. Yes. Sometimes get your family and tell them I'm taking you out and take them to an expensive meal. Are you hearing me? Ta -ra -ra -ra. Then you count the man and say, Rika, braka, ta -ta. we belong here. Smell the atmosphere, children. Braka, ba, 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 ba. If Isma is driving it, what of you? If Usalim is driving it, if Muhammad Mustafa. No, th those ones, it's for their world. For us, we have Jesus. No, you can have both. We're tired of people who think they are going to ignore the principles of the spirit and somehow land on, the, on miracle money. Listen, those of you who go to men of God for miracle money, be careful. The scriptures have showed you how wealth is made. For you asking, miracle money, how much? How many have bought mansions out of miracle money and are driving expensive cars out of miracle money. No. Miracle money pays taxes. Go in a fish. Miracle money pays taxes. It does not build wealth. Miracle money pays rent. Miracle money, it pays fees. It does not give you an inheritance. So stop miracle manning around and do the principles of Almighty God. We're tired of poor Christians. We're tired of poverty. We are tired of lack. We are tired. Do you know what poverty is making men do? Do you know what it means? I, I met a man, this fellow, he was studying something and he had never touched 300,000. I told you the story. 300, he told me. And I said, what manner of men? Poverty is a spirit. And it is bad. It looks bad on a believer. You look funny when you're poor. No, 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 no. Praise God. Praise God. Sometimes you have to raise faith a bit. Sometimes you have to walk into expensive restaurants a bit. I told people, if you're believing God for a car, buy a tire. Put it in your house. And break fluid. There's a woman, I was somewhere preaching and I got a word of knowledge. She had believed God to build a house for seven years and failed. I asked her, how much money do you have? She said, I have nothing. I asked her, how much is a brick? Then I buy the brick was, I don't know, 250, 300. I told her, go buy two bricks and put them in your house. And then, and every morning, thank God for your house. She bought two bricks. She came to testify to us that after one year, she had built a house she could not build for seven years. And all she needed was a step of faith to buy two bricks. Two. Two. Come on, get to your feet. I want you to speak the things God has spoken and said concerning your life. Listen, in the area of the blessing of God and the finances, I feel in my spirit that there are words that are going to be spoken now that God is establishing under this anointing. Come on, speak. Say, I'm blessed by you, God, to preach the gospel, to feed the poor and the hungry, to build the ministry. I'm anointed for greatness. You told me that I would lend to nations and have no need of borrowing. Come on, talk to God. Talk to God. I refuse the mindset, the mentality of poverty. I refuse it. It's not my portion. It's not my portion. It's not my portion. Just take a minute and refuse 
just take a minute and speak on your life and say this is who I am this is where I belong this is what I believe the word of God has prepared for me I'm the head and not the tail he said I shall be above and not beneath he said you shall reign over the heathen and they shall not rule over you because I am favored and great and all I do I shall prosper Everything I touch shall be blessed. King shall come to your eyes. Cause you are favored and great. In all you do, you shall prosper. Everything I touch shall be blessed. I rebuke the spirit of poverty. I rebuke the spirit of lack. I command the spirit of ignorance to leave God's people. We are tired of poverty in our nation. Because with the poverty has come disease. With poverty has come manipulation and lack and abuse and misuse of the word of God. And handling it with deception to satisfy our own selfishness. God will refuse poverty in our nation. You said we shall lend nations and have no need of borrowing. Why is it that the nations where poverty is is sickness also? Is every manner of evil also? We refuse the spirit of poverty on our land. More so on every name that professes the name of Jesus. We refuse you to be mean men. Average Christians. No. May God give you enough to feed the widow. May God give you enough to feed the orphans. May money never have a control over you. No. May it answer you for the greater good of preaching the gospel. And the expansion of the kingdom of God. May God be the alpha and the omega of your finances. May he surprise you. May he put you in a place where things will break for you. May you see supernatural financial deliverance, independence. May you be independent on men and entirely dependent on God. May the lines fall in pleasant places. May you have a goodly heritage. Will you be blessed going in and going out? He said you shall build houses and live therein. He said you shall plant vineyards and eat thereof. The Bible says he blessed Abraham until the land could not hold him. May God bless you more than your nation. May God bless you until the continent can't hold you. May God bless you until your home area can't hold you. May God bless you until your family, your relations cannot hold you. May the blessing of God that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow rest on you. May you not struggle. May we also, God, build things that the world will admire. May men fly in to see the beauty and majesty of things that are built by the hand of the children and sons and daughters of God. May our children own the biggest conglomerates of this world. May they own the biggest businesses, the biggest hospitals and schools. Let them go into their hands, God, because through that we can preach the gospel. And may our young men learn to work hard. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. I have seen the hand of God. And I can confirm that when the economy of heaven falls on you, your life can't be the same. God has been good. May God make you live above men. May he make you live above men. May he deliver you from the hand of those who think if they don't feed you, you will not survive. Those who think that if they fire you, you will not make a living. God on you! May he supply. May you see the evidence of his supply in your life. Believe God this year that something will happen.
out of the ordinary and it won't control you no you will build the kingdom of God you will build the kingdom of God I've seen it happen in the lives of many and my life too God is going to surprise some of you I know some of you are going to realize that anointing the power that that maketh rich that power he gives us power to make wealth that power that power that makes wealth I know who I'm talking to I know the Bible says for the Lord gives us power to make wealth that he might establish the covenant oh my God the richest people in the world are here give us a few years you'll understand what we're talking about that is why I don't want to leave Uganda uh -uh. I want to preach it from here at least they say America made grace we were rich If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again. I believe that you are a son of God who gave his life for me. Today, I'm born again. In Jesus' name, amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.